uh, do you call yourself? I I think you. I think I. Sh- I th- do you call yourself as an artist? It's a stem creation. You should uh, be right. What do you think of yourself? I always say like, oh, everyone's an artist. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to the series. My name is Jason and today I'll be your host for this podcast, Jason in a Chatterbox, J-A-C. A podcast where I learn about things in life from a series of discussion with my friend or domain expert and also to improve myself as a better conversationalist. The other time, we explore on cooking, a skill that manifests through the human need of surviving. If you haven't checked the episode, you can find it in the video card here or you can find it in the link in the description. But now, we'll be discussing about other human skills or aspects cultivated through creativity. Can you guess what it is? The aspect itself quite notoriously known from a famous statement by a comedian actually. And some of you might heard about this before, some of you might hear this for the first time, it's fine. It sounds like this. The earth without art is just eh. And that is roughly translated to the world we are living in will be a boring plain one without art. So in this episode, we'll be learning about art, from how an artist's journey looks like, to the significance of art in life. However, I myself only have a minuscule amount about fine art. It's only right if we learn someone who are more seasoned in the field. Luckily, I know one. She's a young talented artist, but saying talented is such an understatement. With her previous work exhibited in many places, national gallery, and then art institution, Plus, awarded with best rejected title in her cohort, she's definitely, I can say confidently, a very outstanding artist. So without further ado, please welcome Unita Rebecca. Yay, hello, I'm here. Unita. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> hello, thank you for joining me today. Sure, of course. <laughs> How how's your day today? Is it good? Yeah, it's good. I got to talk with my students and uh, yeah, working online is a little easier. So yeah, it's been a good How, how was your progress on the, your painting, the, your recent painting? My recent painting? Oh, I'm starting a new one. Oh, Currently, exciting. I'm working on like smaller pieces <laughs> okay. so I can up my speed. Yes. Before, before we are talking in deeper and knowing you more, can you tell about yourself, your background, and then what you do for living? Mm, okay, so I am. I come from Indonesia. Indonesia. From Indonesia. <laughs> I'm a Surabayan. So if you hear me talk, sometimes there's an accent. My friend says there's an accent. If I, um, if I get angry, then it'll come out. Yeah, and then um, currently I'm uh, living in Singapore. So I came here to study art. So mm. I studied art at NAFA. I took fine arts. So fine arts usually just includes painting, sculpting, things like that. And then currently I'm working as an art teacher. Wow. The age range of the kids that I teach is very big. <laughs> so I teach... Um, from three years old up to eighteen, yeah. Very classy. Do you do you <laughs> teach during the workday and work weekend as well? I teach during the weekend and weekday. Yes. So usually my off day is during the weekday, because the kids are obviously freer during the weekend. So is is it only a a child class or are there any adult classes as well? Actually, there are adult classes, but usually it's like in a, in a different location. So for ah. our location, mostly we deal with students. Okay, cool. Yes. So now, the, the one is a very formal introduction and then Dogs. all the background. So in order to give a better picture to the listener or viewers, mm-hmm. I have a personality sort of question. <gasps> so let's say, let's say, <laughs> because you are an artist, right? You are doing okay. painting. And yes. you need to pick color, is it? Yes, you need to pick colors all the yes, time. <laughs> exactly. Now, let's say you are you are only allowed to pick three colors and mm. each of one to represent your personality, your surrounding and your life story. What color for each of it? Oh. What color will you pick? That's the first time somebody asked me that kind of question. 
Okay, someone to pick my personality, my surrounding, and then my life story. Mm -hmm. For myself, okay, for my life story, I'll pick like a pastel yellow. Wow. Okay. Yes. Do I need to explain why, or or do I leave it a mystery? Let's 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 expose or tell about the <laughs> color first, then we discuss it why then. Okay. Okay. Then after that, my surrounding. Maybe like a lilac kind of color. So ah, it's a lilac. Ah, uh, yeah. So like a purplish blue. And then for my personality, personality. Oh, this is hard. Maybe like a yellow ochre color. Oh wow! The the color choices is so specific. You need, <laughs> you need to help me to give the color the color code later. Yes. Yes. <laughs> You can okay. go to Photoshop hashtag. Yes. So okay. So you have your three color: your pastel yellow, your lilac, and then what is the last one? It's a yellow ochre. Ochre. Okay. Why? Yes. Why? Why do you choose each of it? Uh, pastel yellow, cause I think um, I mean, I think I'm quite simple minded. Ah, okay. <laughs> I think for uh, I think so far I'm quite happy with the way my life turns out mm -hmm. and with the way i am so i think yellow is a happy color like uh yeah and pastel because i don't think it's like a very like if it's a bright yellow it feels very aggressive ah. so, far. so it's a pastel yellow then my surrounding is lilac because it's currently my favorite color oh so, bts <laughs> is it i think so yeah yeah, but yeah, it's currently my favorite color. So um, I think my surrounding is good. It's like warm-ish. It's like a color between pink and blue, right? Mm -hmm. So it's pink is a very romantic warm color. Blue is a calming color. So something like that in between. Warm yeah. but calm. I think, then, yeah. Yes. You can imagine, close yep. your eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then after that, for myself, it's a yellow ochre. So yellow ochre is a brownish, yellowish, greenish color. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, one of my favorite colors also because it's a bit of an earthy color. Sorry? And it's an earthy kind of color. Oh, earth, earth tone, is it? Mm -mm, it's an I earth see. tone, yeah. And I think, I don't think I'm a very stand out-ish kind of person, I think. So I think I'm a bit of a, an earthy kind of person. Does well, that make sense? You yes, it is kind of makes sense. You blending with the earth, but you are still uh -huh. bright enough, right? Because it's yellow. I guess so. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm. Okay. That's that's very interesting choice of color. <laughs> okay, so you are you are studying art, fine art, and then you are mostly known for your painting. Uh, what what is your first encounter or experience with painting? First painting, huh? or and why painting? Why painting? Mm, my first encounter with painting. My first encounter with painting that I really 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 like mm -hmm. uh, was actually in Singapore. It's in a museum. I think currently because of COVID, it's closed. But it's in Parkview Museum. So if you go around Bugis area, then there's like a Gotham building. Do oh, you know that? Yep, yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's over there. So this museum is run by some rich dude, Italian. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so all the works are like Italian. And then because it's like privately owned, um, mm -hmm. and because I, there's a thing about like Singaporean artists versus international artists. Yeah. Because of the lack of space that they might have, because Singapore is such a small country, so your artwork size decreases as well. Because ah, okay. you can only work, you know, in such a small space, you know. So when you come to like Italy, German, you know, all these fancy European spaces, and you have like humongous studios to work with, then your artwork becomes like an entire wall. Mm. So if you go to the museum, the artwork sizes are really huge, and they're very um very um, for some artworks uh, i guess like the closest word for it would be like something like sublime oh 
Yeah, and I think if you, for me, what I, um, why I like the experience of art that I really like that I get from painting is a bit similar to, because I'm a Christian, it's a bit similar to like going to church. Mm. Like when you worship and things like that, then you feel very centered and then you feel very peaceful. I'm not necessarily peaceful, but you feel like, you feel very in the moment. Like you ah. don't think about the past or the future, but you feel what you feel currently. Is it Zen? Is it what? Sorry? Zen. Zen. Z Z E N. Um uh, may it's not really a peaceful kind of feeling though. Mm, okay. Mm, it's like yeah, I, and that's as best as I can explain. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> There's a reason why I don't write instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. So, so the, your interest only developed when you first came to Singapore. Ah uh, no! I uh, ever since I was small, I like to draw. Ah yes. Mm, so uh, yeah. Um, about that, you start painting since little, I believe, because you just mentioned it just now. And mm -hmm. then, how? What kind of things that you paint or draw last time? Mm, and well, yeah. uh, when I was like, the okay, I used to, I think everybody starts out the same. They always do draw like cartoon characters and oh. then uh, if you see a cartoon that you like, then you draw. I think when you were younger, then you draw all those things. Mm -hmm. But then after maybe around like P, P6-ish, then I started doing more observational kind of drawings. Observational? So like, yeah, so like... um more academic kind of drawings oh. so like uh like shading and then like still life and portraits things like that i see yes then what what kind of scenery or object that you recently draw the most oh so recently i draw a lot of landscapes ah. yes why why why, why? landscapes um I think I recently got an obsession with trees. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why. So every time in the bus, I would just like look at the trees and I always feel like they're very pretty. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, talking yes. about that, there's a lot of trees in Singapore. So mm, a yes. lot of inspiration for you. Yes, yes. So I just keep looking at the trees and I'm like, oh, so cool. And then if there's like a really big tree, then you're like, oh, this tree is older than me. You know? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> are there are there any particular style that you're going for with the recent obsession with your trees or um, landscapes? I think I tried. Um, I think my I think everybody's art changes with their personality change. Mm. <laughs> so I used to be more edgy. <laughs> <laughs> We, uh, I, I want to talk about it later, but okay, no. please, I don't worry. <laughs> Embarrassing. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, yeah, so I used to be a bit more emo, but um, I think after, like, hitting my... Uh, after some time, then I've gotten a lot more optimistic, and I'm happy mm. about life and things like that. Then I think, like, the drawing changes and the color changes based on that. Mm. Um... But yeah, I think it's based on personality. Personality. Yeah. Then, okay. So I believe you do a lot of exhibition and then all some of your paintings is exhibited there, right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember what is your first artwork that is exhibited in the gallery? Yes. Oh, in the gallery. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. If you, if you remember, what is your first ever artwork that you remember? Yeah, I when I was in high school, I took IB art. So, mm -hmm. um, so what in was Sing that? In Singapore, there's like O level, A level, things right. like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. So there's an equivalent to like an A level, which is IB. Ah, IB. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I took IB art. So, ah, oh. uh, so it's the subject for IB. Oh. Yeah. So at the end of the year. You don't really have an exam. You just have an exhibition. Oh, wait. Hang on. There's a yes. curriculum that examines you based on the exhibition of art? Yeah. 
yeah so at the end you need to uh, produce this many artworks and wow. then like you will need to exhibit it something like oh, that okay yeah. that's intense okay so so, <laughs> so what was your first first artwork exhibited there I think it's I think it's during the phase where I like portraits. So I think it's a lot of portraits. Mm. So do you remember yeah. which portrait? Whose portrait? Uh, I don't really remember. It's because I at that timing I don't draw people that I know. Uh, so some random really, strangers? Uh I draw people that I think is pretty. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> It's, it's something in common among all artists. They like to draw someone who is pretty. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, so there is your first artwork. Is it your favorite? Uh, so far, no. I think not. Then what is your favorite artwork so far? Mm, I think my favorite artwork is always the most recent one. <laughs> oh. the, 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 your small size. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Because I think, because your, your taste follows, right? And it mm. follows your style. So, yeah, I think my most favorite one would always be my most recent one. Because there's a, there's a, how do you say, a perception that I have. Is, oh, an artwork that is so grandeur, so big. Oh, that's definitely an artist's favorite. But it's not the case. Ah, uh, I guess that's not the case. Yeah. Uh, mm, what would make a favorite one? So I I did big artworks before. Yeah, but I remember I, that. I think it's the experience associated with it, because I think I did some big artworks before for like some stuff, mm -hmm. but it was so stressful, uh, oh. because of like outside circumstances, not because of the painting itself. Then in the end, I. <sighs> Like, I can't wait to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, so because, because it's so big, it requires a lot of time and effort to put into it. Then... I, I think not necessarily the size, because I've done big ones that are fun. But it's just like the circumstance surrounding the painting. Mm, okay. Yeah, like lots of... Yeah, like lots of circumstances. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, maybe Yunita will clarify that in some maybe, other time. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Now, uh, do you call yourself? I I think you. I think I. I do you call yourself as an artist? It's a stem question. You should uh, be right. What do you think of yourself? I always say like, oh, everyone's an artist. <laughs> oh wow. It feels a bit cheesy. <laughs> I don't know why, but it feels a bit cheesy. Like, I don't, uh, I never think of an occasion where I need to call myself an artist. Oh. Unless it's like in a gallery show, then I'm handing my name card, then usually you'll have like an artist so that when people read your name card, once they've, you know, seen you for the next like three months and they remember, oh, it's that oh. one girl, you know, not some business person, True. you know. But I think that's the only occasion where I would like put the label in. Like in other cases, I don't think I would like say it out loud. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. It is, it is, it is, how do I say? You don't, do you introduce yourself with your job title? Or your... That's, yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, so everyone is an artist then. Mm -hmm. Now, do you, do you have any particular dream or goal related to art then? Mm, yes, yes, of course. What, what is it? Can you share to the listener and viewers? <sighs> um, uh, I, 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 for me personally, I have this conflicting idea about mm. like pursuing something in art. Because uh, do you remember the poll, like the single form poll, like the, uh, like the least useless... Oh, I remember, yeah, there's yes. the, the, the survey <laughs> about the least, like, non-essential work, yes. right? <laughs> yeah, and then, like, I remember my feet was getting filled with, like, because, I mean, obviously, I have a lot of friends who do art, right? Then they mm -hmm. were getting so angry about <laughs> it. And then, but then in my mind, I was like, I guess that's true in a way, in the sense that it's not necessary, art is not art is not something that is necessary but it's i think it's something that will just 
whether you want it or not, it will always be there. That kind of thing. Mm. You know, it's not like you try to make it that only then art can exist, but it's something that is naturally there. So then I have this conflicting feeling like of wanting to be useful mm. to people, but also wanting to do art. And then I'm trying to find a middle ground. I believe um, there's a, a subfield of art called applied art, right? Mm-mm-mm, there is applied arts. What What's your take on applied art? Uh, um, I'm um, applied art. Um, I don't think it's as useful as i okay the kind of use that i don't okay let me think about how i'm okay. gonna say because uh, i can i can give you some example to think about it right mm-hmm. because I, I studied pure physics mm-hmm. and then there's a joke or basically even like pure pure academician or like pure mm-hmm. academics they mm-hmm. will be the most the most happy when their field of study or work can be applied until their end of life that's a joke <laughs> but i'm not sure whether you are the one that eventually think oh maybe i will need to apply it for the better use for people how how do you feel or think about it um i think of course art will always have use like um because it's such a broad term yes and like yeah like even like your even your llama over there is some kind of art for you, you know? Yeah. So, um, but I think I want something that is more practical. Oh, practicality. Because uh, some, it's a bit like for example, if I if I'm teaching, then after a few weeks or even after a few months, and I see my student like improve a lot when I check their sketchbook. Right. Then, of course, you get that immediate feeling of satisfaction, right? Yes. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. But, but with art, you don't, you only have that satisfaction. For me, I have the satisfaction when, I, when I'm in the process, you know. But then I feel a bit, um, like, there's a bit like, a, like, am I selfish? Like, ah. that kind of thing. It's the yeah. conflicting feeling that you are still having now, right? Yeah. Uh, mm. So, yeah. So it, it's good if I can. You know, like I was thinking, like maybe I can make like a story book or a book. Yep. Uh, then at least it will have a more of a practical use that um you know like the consequence I can see directly, like the effect or mm. something like mm. that, uh, rather than something a bit too abstract. Yeah. You are currently in the pursuit of trying to find the right balance between the practicality and the fine art itself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ah, yes. Okay, okay, I understand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How do you see the significance or the meaning of art in life? <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not qualified to answer. <laughs> it's okay. If you, if you can't answer, we can move on. Um, what do you think in your limited knowledge <laughs> of art? I think for me as an uh-huh, uh-huh. outsider, because I am actually only a casual, casual or photography hobbyist, I feel that art oh. is, I feel that art is necessary in the sense that oh, in the in the messiness or in the chaos, the un unordered basically the chaotic of the world you can still see the beauty mm. of it so Oof. so that's what i think in my about my from my minuscule amount of fine art knowledge okay that's enough <laughs> mm, but, there's this yeah from the perspective of an uh-huh. an art graduate what, what? <laughs> um i think um for me I always think that um I mean there's lots of things I think about art but I guess um like for example if I I think that having beautiful things around you um makes you happier that's the first thing 
Mm. Uh, like for example, if you come back to a really messy room or like a really ugly room, then of course your mood will be, you know, not so good as compared to if you went into a hotel room, everything's neat and tidy and mm. there's like some fragrance in the air. You know, that's some kind of beauty in itself, right? Yes. And um, and I saw like there's this video that says like even like back during like caveman times when they were when they started making tools, actually their tools weren't only created for functions because they actually had engravings and decorations on their tools. Mm. Uh, so even back then, people were creating things that that they thought were beautiful, and I mm. think it's because. Having things that are beautiful makes it easier. Yeah, so it's like what you say. Like, it makes it easier to cope with the uh, maybe difficult things in life or things like that. You know, yeah. Whether it's like a beautiful object or, I mean, meaning is also a beautiful thing. Yep. Like for example, if you learn about um, purely conceptual art, art, you can even consider a thought art these days mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there doesn't it doesn't you don't have to have an object even oh, to consider on, it art it's only know? just a thought it's a thought written down for example so oh. there was this i think like a singaporean artist he um he went to the he wanted to create a merlion for the finnish biennale so usually the finnish biennale is like a big art festival uh, then artists all over the world that are like quite high standing are invited to come in. So he wanted to create this merlion, but then I think like the Singapore government, and I don't know if I'm getting this wrong. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> but then like the Singapore government like declines, like saying that like the image is copyrighted, should not become, uh, ah. and it shouldn't be um, reproduced to be put on foreign soil or things like that. Right, right, right. Uh, so instead of, uh, you know, like, creating anything he just posted his failed proposal oh. as his work oh it's possible uh, for such a thing yes it is possible for such wow. a thing that's yeah. new to me I have... yes okay and um yeah and uh, if you explore like conceptual art i guess like more of these kinds of things will come out so rather than focusing on the look of the object, they're fo focusing on the beauty of the thought. So oh. another one of the more conceptual kind of art that I really like, actually, I don't know if it's conceptual, but I like the concept. <laughs> <laughs> There's this uh, photograph by a Japanese photographer. Mm -hmm. So if you look at a photo, it's just a movie theater and the screen is white. That's it. Yeah. And then if you, yeah, like an old movie theater, then oh. with white screen like that yes that's and then the, if you, that's it it's not that's right it. that's Wait. it okay you you need to yeah. give me give me the reference to it i need to find <laughs> it <laughs> yeah later i find okay. but um but the story is that he is uh challenging the idea that a photograph is a moment in time so whenever you mm. take a picture then it's like you know like one second yep. more a few seconds only but what he actually does is he set his camera speed so low that it takes the entire movie to take a single shutter oh. uh, so in the end he produced this photo that is essentially actually capturing the whole movie oh the duration of the whole movie so the yeah so he's basically so the camera is actually processing the whole movie but it ends up because it's overexposed lah. Uh, like, yeah, so, yeah. It, so it'll be this white box i thought the concept was interesting so that, yeah that's very interesting concept mm -hmm. but yeah I, I i can see why you like it yes yes okay something so that's, like that. that that's such a philosophical question let's go let's be down it to need them back <laughs> so yeah you you say that you you are into up way back since you're you was little right yes you, you draw and then everything Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, is is anyone in your family doing art as well, or your parents like to draw? My sister does design, and my mom likes to draw. Yes. Ah, okay. About that, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that it's something about 
family like the art the art feeling or the art what is the thing the art skills maybe is inherited from your family or it can be uh, externally nurtured from teaching and everything and you are teaching right yes yeah, yeah. do you think it's mm-hmm. is a fully nature natural or there's an aspect of nurturing how do you think i think it's the same with like intelligence or like any kind of like mental illnesses like maybe you have like a gene predisposed to mm. certain things maybe so maybe like what i think for art is like you usually for people in art they need to have very good focus because uh yeah mm. so maybe you have a predis or you have a predisposition towards uh you know beautiful things maybe you're a visual learner things like that then of course amplified with a conducive learning environment supportive environment and of course uh, yeah so it's a it's a plan half half maybe mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay now this 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 part i want to talk about you mentioned the art style you did in back then and now it's way different right yes yes and, and then I, um i i did some uh how do you say research research and no. <laughs> somehow i found a very two different artist statement oh really so, yes and really? and yeah you already mentioned it it's a personality changes because it's mm-hmm. from edgy to more optimistic or is it mm-hmm. are there any other aspect that make the major changes of typical artist statement Is it trend or is it your you want to try new things or something? Uh, I mean everything will I think everything will boil down to a change in personality. I think I don't think that um, I don't think that artists follow trends. I don't know. Nah. <laughs> I don't know. I can't speak for. <laughs> But yeah, I don't think it's a trend thing. I think, okay, maybe it's a trend thing. Maybe. But, uh, I don't think if it's an artist statement, I don't think it's a trend. Visual-wise, of course, yeah. Of course, you will be influenced by trend because you see things and the more you see, the more you like it, you know. Mm. It's the same with everything. So, uh, subconsciously. <laughs> subconsciously, you pick it up, right? Yes, maybe subconsciously, I do pick it up. But um, but for me, I think it's just more of a personality. Personality. Mm-hmm, it's okay. it's not it's not about uh how do you say a uh, stage of life as well, right? How do you say? Stage of life. The change oh. of your life stage from maybe teenager to young adult does it affect? Um, I guess your personality do change a lot once you are, you know, once you do grow up. Mm. And I think um, with your personality, not personality change lah, with your maturity. Maturity. <laughs> then um, for me, maybe um, the function of art mm. changes mm. in what I use it for or yeah. what I feel it is useful for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's everything's again boils down to personality and maturity of the artist itself. <sighs> yeah, right. I mean, I mean the interest, the current interest that you pick out to create your artwork, or um, from all the happenings around the world that you want to talk about. Of course, it will all be influenced by mm. what you're predisposed to be interested in i think so i think in the end yeah okay. it boils down to that there's this one thing i hope that you can give an aspiration to <laughs> the untrained or maybe a new aspiring artist what mm-hmm. do you think is the the most valuable lesson they should keep and hold during the start of their journey Oh okay. Um, oh gosh, it's gonna be cheesy. <laughs> Let me hear it. 
Just do it. Um, um, I think there. I think there's something that uh, this is something that my lecturer said to me that really stuck, because I think I'm the kind of person who listens to people a lot. So if they, uh, so it makes me doubt myself a lot. So if I even if I do something I like. Mm-hmm. Then they say, oh, um, I, I don't think this style is good, blah, blah, blah. Then I'll be like, oh, shoot, maybe I should change, blah, 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 like that, right? Mm-hmm. So I think I'm that kind of person. Um, so I, what she said was, um, you should, your whole aim is, uh, should be to create art that you should be proud of, that if nobody wants to buy it, you should want to, you know, buy it yourself. So at, at the uh. very least. Yeah, so you shouldn't care if anybody wants to get it, even if the whole world wants to own it. Like if you don't wanna, if you're not proud of it or if you're not happy with it, then it's useless because you're the one who made it, you know. And I think that's that gives a lot of what is it? Yeah, uh, comfort. Comfort. I think. Yeah, like I think I think it's it's the same with anybody who's making anything, right? Even with you and your podcast, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I I I can add on and elaborate, and I yeah. think that's very true, because mm. when when you try to make something that according to others' expectation, you are bounded by this expectation, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, uh, for the viewers also as a lesson, it's actually, uh, bound to your freedom. So if you if you keep following the expectation, then you you don't have your freedom of yourself. Then you just mm-hmm. following the others. So yeah, that's 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 yeah. very very inspiring. It also ties to what I believe as well. So thank you, Unita. Okay, last thing, Oof. very last thing, before we close the Ooh, discussion. So mm-hmm. yeah, before we close the discussion and the episode, do you have anything to say to viewer and listener? about art anything about art mm. what do you like to say to the viewer or listener anybody can and should do art amazing <laughs> uh, yes <laughs> um, there's no need for any formal training involved um, it can be it's it's really a it's really a wide subject that you can do anything you like so for example my friend uh, who's feeling stress and stuff like that, she, you can take art as a form of therapy. You can just throw paint around. And um, one other thing why, why I think art is uh, a good medium for anyone is because oftentimes, um, you know, like, of course, words fail. You know, you want to tell your mm. feeling to your friend or your family member or your loved ones, your partner. Of course, it only goes to a certain extent. But if you can be really honest with yourself when you're creating something, and then I think it shows on your paper or your music or whatever it is, then at least, you know, like you hope that this reaches out to, I don't know, somebody else. Mm -hmm. Or you can, you get the feeling that you communicate something. It reminds me of, a quote, I think, is was it uh, a picture with a thousand words? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, right. yeah, right. Okay. So yeah, yeah that's that, that's a very interesting message that everyone should do art, no matter their skills, because eventually, picture or some things you can't express it with words. So you can express mm. it in you. The, the interesting thing is right, like you might not be able to like know what it's about right now when you're doing it in the moment but maybe like once you mature and then look back you can think about your work after some time and realize oh i've gone through that phase in life where i was like this and Mm. this is what i thought about and what i felt then yeah it's pretty nice (laughs) it's it's a memory of life Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so so yeah viewers and listeners that's all that we have today our discussion about art will be ended here So yeah, thank you so much, Unita, for coming in and staying with me for discuss for the viewer and listener. So let's say um they are trying to to find you more, like they want to know more about your art. 
where where do they can find you or are there any particular particular causes that you want to support and raise to the viewer and listener uh they can find me on my instagram <laughs> and um any causes um save the trees <laughs> I guess because I'm currently obsessed with trees. <laughs> I, I may I, I might put some trees trees, uh, and NGO later. Uh, Nita will pick it later. Okay, so yeah, that's all that we have today. Thank you for tuning and listening to this episode. We are where we are learning about art. Uh, this episode will be available in Spotify, Google Podcast, and Apple Podcast soon. And then the video format will be available in YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. So yeah, that's all and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Thank you, Yunita. Thank you.